John chapter 8. Are you there? Say I'm there. Okay. I'm reading verse 1. You read verse 2. I will read 3. You read verse 4. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Verse 2. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, verse 4, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Verse 6, Verse 7. So when, when they continue asking him, <laughs> he lifted himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast his stone at her. Verse 8, the last one. And again he stooped them and wrote on the ground, Father, this is your word. The entrance of the word giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. I pray, O oh Lord, will be simple that this one will bless our life. Father, let it be none of me. Let it be all of you. Let this word bless us. Let it manifest your power in our life. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let us be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. It's nice to see you. Amen. I'm always happy to see you. Say that to your neighbor. Say, I'm always happy to see you. Amen. What did he say? What did she say? Did he say back to you? I'm always happy to see you. I read something this morning. I said, Father, how do you say this in the midst of your family? Somebody said, the earthly family is temporal, but the spiritual family lasts longer. And I say, God, how are you going to say this? Amen. So it is better to have spiritual family. That is what it says. Amen. Because I must see you in heaven. Our relationship continues. Amen. But the earthly, the, the earthly family, so not all of our family members are going to heaven with us. Whether I like it or not. So it is better to be to be spiritually connected. Hallelujah. That is why I'm always happy to see you because you are my family. And I know we are all go to the kingdom of God forever and ever. We will part no more. Hallelujah. So spiritual connection is better than blood connection. Amen. How many of you believe what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. So, you are my brother and you are my sister. You know, they came to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. This Bible is too... <laughs> this Bible is too much. Jesus was teaching. And they came to him. They told him that his brother, his family, they are looking for him. He said, hey, which family are you talking about? Ah, these people are my... <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you are my family. Say to your neighbor, so you are my family. Say to him, say to her, you are my family. And I love you with the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's nice to see you. Always happy to be in the house of God where you see the people of God. And as you have come today, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will touch you. Your situation will change. Your life will change. You cannot come to him and go back home the same way you came. Mm -mm. There must be a difference. That means joy is filling your life today. Hallelujah. Um, the word we have read, I want to speak about what do you say? What do you what? What do you say? What do you say? 
what to say. Our word is so powerful. This word that is coming from our mouth. Word is an expression of thought, expression of idea, expression of our stand. Where you stand on thing, you verbalize it. It's all about our thoughts. It's, it's, it's all about our thinking. It's all about our mind that we verbalize out. It is only when it comes out we know what is in your mind. So, what you say is very, very important. What you say is very, very important. There is creative power in the world. There is destructive power in the world. There is encouraging power in the world. There is lifting up power. You, you, you speak to some people and they'll be lifted up. You speak to some people, they'll be encouraged. You speak to some people, they will be happy. You speak to some people, they forget about their worry. They forget about things they are, they are going through. Word is so powerful. What we say is very, very important. Anybody saying anything to you is, exp is, exp is, exp is, exp uh, is saying something. Is communicating something to you. One of the most powerful ways we communicate is by word. Communication is by word. By word. And do you know what? We speak to things. You speak to things. You speak to situation. You speak to people. And you can speak for somebody. Hallelujah. That is why when somebody is talking to you, it's either of the two. It's either he's expressing his mind or he's saying to you what he has had somewhere. You speak for somebody. An ambassador of a nation will always speak for his country. An ambassador will say, this is what my country says. They speak for somebody. An oracle of God speak for God. Speak for God. You either speak for God or speak for people or speak what you have heard. And you can speak with people. Hallelujah. I like like to speak with people a lot. When you talk to people, you hear what they say back to you. You speak with people, they speak back to you. Amen? So, you can speak to, you can speak with, and you can speak for. What is so powerful? I'm now calling your attention to the verse 5 of the passage we have read. Look at verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Some passages say, what do you say? Hallelujah. Amen. This is a story that, 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 that once you read about it, you say, what is going on here? Christ was teaching. He was teaching the people the word of God, the kingdom of God, teaching the the what the, the what the attitude of, of of the people should be, and that's what Christ has come to do. Christ came to teach, to preach, and to heal. Hallelujah. So he's now teaching, and in the midst of his class, something happened here. Something happened here. The Pharisees and the scribes. They allegedly, according to the allegation that they came up with, they, they threw the woman in the middle of the class. And they said, Teacher, we have caught this woman committing adultery. They know what the law said. They know what, what they're supposed to do. But they want to hear what Christ will do what we say. This, this is what the Lord said though. Moses said anybody caught in a thing like this should be stoned. But you, teacher, teacher of the law, son of God, the Messiah, Christ, what will you say? What do you say? Amen. 
These are the situations we find ourselves sometimes. When people are waiting for what you will say about a situation, about a condition, about an event, about people around us. People want you to say something. Not by what they have said. And it's what you say that they will carry out. This is why I'm saying, what will you say? These people knew the law. They caught the woman so that they know where Jesus stands, what he will say, so they can use his word. Yes, man, that was teaching the people. Christ was teaching about God, about the kingdom of God. That is not enough. To people, you have not said enough. People want to hear more from you. What you say is important. Because word of our mouth is very, very important. David said, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be accepted. This thing we have to, we have to seriously think about it. The word coming from our mouth. Will it encourage? Will it lift up? Will it condemn? Will it discourage? Will it put down? Will it set things back? Or will it move things forward? What we say? What we say? You say? What says thou? Do you know what? Christ did not say anything. He stood down. There are times you don't say nothing. What you don't say, they cannot quote. People will quote the word they hear. They can never quote somebody who doesn't say any anything. Let's look at the situation here in reply what Christ said, which is where I'm really, really going this morning. So that when we say things, when we say things about events, when we say things about people, when we say things about circumstances, what we say must bring light. What we say must encourage. What we say must make people happy. What we say must correct people. What we say must glorify God. They said they caught a woman in adultery. The woman did wrong. Yes, he did wrong. The people let the man go. They carry only the woman. They brought the woman to Jesus. And what Christ said now reveals something. Truly, the man committed adultery. But he said, anyone without sin, anyone without sin, let him throw. Anyone without sin. That is why, because we say things about people, because we say things about events, let's see that, let's see where we have been coming from too. Let's examine our lives too. It is by grace. Apostle Paul said, it is by grace I am what I am. He will say, I, I persecuted church, I did this. I'm pretty, uh, I was doing this and I was a chief sinner. But I found grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes when we are talking about people, we forgot where God has been taking us from. Nobody is ever born a saint. It is the grace of God that has changed our life, that has transformed our life, that make us what we are. When we now see people behaving in the way we used to behave before, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Master, what do you say? We, we, we catch him. What do you say? What we say matters a lot. Who say matters a lot? Amen. In the second Samuel, 
David committed adultery with Bathsheba. He did everything in the secret. He did everything nobody knew. Only him and Joab knew what has happened. And Prophet Nathan came. He came to talk to King David. And he described the whole episode with an history. And he did, David didn't allow Nathan to finish. David couldn't see himself. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Second Samuel. I say have, I say a few minutes. Second Samuel chapter chapter eighteen, I think. Amen. Let's go there. It's, it's a wonderful story. What do you say? Hallelujah. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. Second Samuel chapter 12. Let me read so we can understand this story. What do you say? And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city. The one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little a lamb which he had bought and nourished up and he grew up together with him and with his children. He did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom I was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich. And his spear to take off his own flock. Of his own heart. To dress for the warfaring, wayfaring man. That was come unto him. But took the poor man's lamb. And dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, Has I not lived? The man that had done this shall surely die. And he shall return the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, <laughs> Hallelujah. And Nathan said to David, Hey, you are. You are the man. Amen. What do you say? David never considered himself to be this, the man that Nathan was talking about. Never saw himself. And he pronounced judgment that that man, you should not, you should not live. We before you say anything, but other what you hear, what to see, hey, take a moment. Take a moment. What's going on around here? If I were to be in this person's shoe, how would I handle it? This the scribe and the Pharisees. Not, the woman was not the issue here now. But the person they have come to talk to. Amen. The woman who committed the adultery was no more the issue now. But Christ now was not put, was not put on the stage. That is why when you see anything, remember or think about it. This thing I'm about to say what will he do to me? What will he do to the people who have come to me? What will he do with the subject matter? The man, the man, the woman committed adultery. But Jesus was on trial here. Many times people will bring an issue to you. And you don't know you are the one that that they, they really want to, to know what you're going to say. 
What will you say? What will you say? Master, this woman committed it is what Mo- they know what Moses said. But they want to know what Christ will say. David forgot that he was the one in this matter. And by the time Nathan was talking to David, David thought it must be somebody who had committed this one in the city so that he might pronounce judgment. David did not see himself doing what Prophet Nathan said. Hallelujah. Are you getting something out of this? What will you say? It is so easy to talk about people, talk about people's failure, talk about people's faults. How about you? How about you? How about you? How about your own situation? How about your own circumstances? How about your own challenges? Yoruba people will say, when you point a one finger, the rest of the finger are pointing to you. Christ did not say anything. I want you to take a look at what Christ did there. Christ took down. And, uh, 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 and Bible scholars, Bible researchers, nobody ever knew what Christ wrote on the ground. But let us imagine this. You have come to talk to me. And while you are standing, I stood down and I was writing, what am I saying to you? You have come to talk to me on a, on a very important matter. And I turned my back on you and I was writing on the... What does that say to you? That means these people are not serious. So these people must be a people with this thing they have come to, to say. Why Christ got up and said to them that if nobody has sinned, no, if none of you, if none of you, anybody that has not seen, let him cast the. And nobody was able to cast the stone. What does that say? It means sometimes, if there's anything flying around, look at your own picture there. If there's any saying going around, look at your own picture there. Where am I? In this, Christ now gave them the opportunity to to see themselves in the situation of this woman. What will you say next time they came to you? So 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 and so. What will you say? Our words are powerful. I put something on my public figure. I said, when we begin to change the word of our mouth, we change our world. We change our environment. Words can change relationship. Words can encourage relationship. What can bastardize relationship? What we say. One thing is certain in this story. Christ did not embrace the wrongdoing of the woman. He did not. But the reporters too. They also went on with something that we too we need to check 
our lives too. In every event, in every story, look out for your own picture there before you say anything. Before you utter a word there, Christ now turn around. Woman, why are you accuse us? And the one who came out, sin no, no more. The subject matter this morning, what do you say? Don't be quick to jump to conclusion about any matter. David was so quick. He jumped to conclusion. Die! The person who did that must, must die. And Nathan had told you. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 3, God was sending Ezekiel to go and give the children of the Lord word. Let's, let's go there and I close. Until you are able to feel what the other person is feeling. Now you can talk. Until you put yourself in somebody else's shoe, now you can talk. That's why Christ went so low. He went down. He got up. He spoke. <laughs> Amen. Christ now made himself to go to see the kind of life this woman was living. He came up. See, Ezekiel chapter 3, as I'm closing. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 3. Mm, amen. Okay, let me read. Let me read verse 14. 14 and 15. Ezekiel 3. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel that dwell by the river of Cheba, and I sat where they sat. See where Ezekiel went to. I came to them of the captivity. They were in captive. They were going through oppression. And Ezekiel was to deliver the world. But before he would begin to say things, he sat. We are the sat. He felt what they felt. Now, he can now talk. If you never have the feeling of your fellow human being, you better don't say nothing. If you never understand the circumstances, the, the situation somebody else is going through, you better don't say anything. What will you say? May the Lord give us the understanding of this. The next time we see anything, it will be for lifting up encouragement in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. How are you doing? Are you okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Why Christ was able to be our Savior? He came. He felt what we felt. There was a song Don Wen sang. He walked where I walk. He felt what I felt. He shared my humanity. And that, that, that was gave him the audacity to be able to talk to us. That was the that's what gave him the audacity to become our savior. Because he knew our frailty. He suffered. He saw everything. He could, he could, so he, he was able now to say, come unto me. Those who are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Let us rise up upon our feet. Hallelujah.